they are not the most literate. You think people that graduate because, with college yes. degrees can't read well? Yeah, I, what I'm telling you is yes. That's what I'm telling you. They're not the most literate. We're, what would I look up we to are verify not, that are, if I wanted I, to see like... You got to do, do the research in your I own time. I have done the research. Okay, I'm, I'm happy to... That's not true. What do, you, what do you mean it's not true? And I'm going I'm to tell you... Okay, I'm gonna, hold on. Let me finish my thing real quick. Hold on. I'm sorry. Because I've done a lot of research on college degrees and a lot of research on education and every single thing that you're saying sounds really good on like a culture war perspective. But when you look at an actual economic perspective, when you look at actual firms that hire people and when you look at the actual median wages given to people that even have some college education... All Biggest of it is me going all to All of it. That's great for you, but for the average American, that's just that's not, not true. true. None of these numbers are found on average. You will okay. never find data that supports the idea that high school earners on average are out earning college degree earners. Every single person that I went to school with is not using the degrees that they paid for. What did you what did you go to what college they actually, for? What did I, uh, journalism. Isn't that what you're doing right now? What do you mean? You're acting like you're a college dorm kid. Yeah, and your catty insults towards people online make you seem like a high school mean girl. What are you doing here? What's going on? I just did uh, PBD, Patrick by David. Mm -hmm. They know you over there, right? <laughs> um, are you laughing? Maybe. Uh, I know, I'm good. Do you know Adam over there? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I just asked Adam. He was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I know Adam. Me and Adam are cool. I'm not as much sure about the PBD guy. I'm pretty, uh, I'm, I'm a pretty far left guy, and I disagree with a lot of stuff they say in a but pretty he's, crazy way. He's, so. They got both on that show. That's why it's so great. But I just did it something with Chris Cuomo. He couldn't be further left. That's what I just did. I yeah, I saw it. Off. Well, but then we bring on left guests, it's usually to roast the fuck out of them, so. No. That's not what happened at all. Oh, that might not have happened this time. That's what I've seen. When I had Anthony Weiner on, it was that. When I've seen other left-leaning guys go on, it was it's usually like a rake him over well, the Well, one of them is, a left, is on the left, right? Which guy? So, um, I thought, I, I really thought that Adam just said I've never voted for a Republican, but I might vote Republican. I think Adam is fair. Yeah. I think Adam is fair generally from what I've seen, but he's like center at best. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even like a communist type guy, but I mean, like mm -hmm. Adam is like pretty center. Like he's like a... Um, I just don't think he's behind all the Trump stuff. But why laugh if I'm like, I just went Patrick back David. It's like, haha, like what's that? Um, oh, sorry. In my world, there's a lot. It's like, it's a, there's always like a lot of drama and people hitting each other behind. So I just laugh because it's funny because I don't, I'm not sure if those guys hate me or not. I've been on their show once. They seem like cool people, but um, he, the Patrick guy has said kind of weird things about me or my fan base before. So it's kind of like a funny, um, it's just a funny thing. There wasn't anything deeper to that, I promise. Oh, okay. No, I was just, I was just curious. I was mm -hmm. like, because you would go on a platform with someone on the right, presumably. Yeah, of course. Okay, because you said, because well, I'm on the left when I asked you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what does that mean? Like, why? People, we need more conversations. It doesn't need to be, I'm on the left, I'm on the right. It's like, what do you actually think? You know, <laughs> what do you actually believe? Sure, I agree, for sure, yeah. Um, what's your, what are you talking about mainly over the past week or two? What's the stuff that's captured your attention, your eyes the most? <sighs> Man, I talk about everything on my show. I mean, obviously, I think the biggest topic for me has been the Diddy lawsuit. It's the craziest thing that's come out, I think, since Jeffrey Epstein. And it's definitely significant because a lot of the work that I do is talking about just, or I guess really asking the question is what's happened to black culture? Because this is not the black culture that I grew up with. And mm -hmm. the Diddy lawsuit potentially answers a lot of those questions. So can you, do you say where you grew up? I grew up, I was born in White Plains, New York, and I grew up in Stamford, Connecticut. Okay. Um, what Can you catch us up on the P. Diddy lawsuit? I haven't been in this area what? as much. Are you kidding? My mind has been, I've done Israel-Palestine okay. for the last four years, or four months, and then like a whole bunch of red pill stuff before that, so yeah. my mind is not, So, yeah. <laughs> in case catch you guys have not seen it, you can go over to my YouTube channel, I've been covering it, but, and if you're there, definitely subscribe. But, um, so essentially, at the end of last year, Diddy was dating that girl Cassie for a long time about 10 years okay, and she started making allegations that Diddy was very, you know, very into, into some very sexually deviant things that I would say. Okay. Um, and forced her to do a lot of things against her will or drugs, whatever. She files this lawsuit and basically overnight, I'm obviously being a bit hyperbolic, but uh -huh. he pays her off. So it ends. And then Cat Williams kind of like makes, alludes to the fact that more stuff is going to come out in 2024 and then a producer whose name is Rodney, drops mm -hmm. a lawsuit, and he alleges to have you know, hundreds of hours of footage backing up his claims, and in the lawsuit, he actually dropped pictures. So it wasn't just this, because you can always have a frivolous lawsuit. It can mean nothing. Mm -hmm. And what essentially he, his lawsuit suggests, allegedly, 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 just for protection here, mm -hmm. um, is that there's a blackmail ring in Hollywood. Diddy is a gangster on top of Diddy sits um, Lucian Grange, who is the CEO of Universal Music Group, that, and this was 
for me, one of the wildest parts. He tells a story about one night where Diddy got mad at somebody and just shot them in like the stomach and the hip. He shows the pictures of the blood all around the bathroom because he was right there when the person got shot and he allegedly went to his knees and tried to help the person. It was Diddy and his son who allegedly shot him. But they said that there's one person that you call when something like that happens. And that guy's name is like Fahim something. And he will come clean it up. The LAPD will write a fake police report. And he shows like how the news then reported that the shooting happened outside. And then it got wiped under the rug. And what's interesting is that guy who you call, the security guy, was the same security person who was one of only two people there when Michael Jackson died. So it's now reopened. All the Michael Jackson stuff. Uh, Super interesting. A lot of stuff that I would say a lot of proof presented in these documents. Like I said, there's a lot of photos included. And if what he is spelling out is correct, then it's basically a homosexual ring that works by black males. They host these, what he calls freak offs and they drug people and they get them to sleep with a minor or do something, you know, that you wouldn't want publicized. And then they own you, right? Because it's like, well, we have you on camera doing this. And so you're going to say or do whatever I want. So very much like the Jeffrey Epstein stuff. Gotcha. Are these in indictments or are these just like affidavits or statements to the media? Is any of this stuff like gone to court yet? Or? It's the lawsuit that he filed. So we're reading the lawsuit okay. documents directly. Is this, this is a civil lawsuit, I'm guessing? Yes. Okay. He's suing Universal Music Group. He's suing Lucy and Grange, per, uh, you know, personally. Um, he alleges that Lucy and Grange and Diddy are in a relationship by saying that like they disappear into Diddy's room uh-huh. and for hours and like this is the stuff that I've seen I was groomed for sex like essentially he wasn't a gay man but then Diddy found him when he was young these are the allegations he's making again a lot of photos like of other rappers he's list named uh, like Cuba Gooding Jr. who's a, uh, an uh, actor, actor yeah it's a lot. Is you know? there, um, has any of this stuff like leaked to the media in terms of like pictures or strong hard evidence or are these mainly just in the charging documents or the civil S- case documents so far? That's also what's really interesting is that, the, yes, it's being covered, but not in the way that it should be covered. The fact that you don't know about it to me is crazy because we've never seen someone that with hundreds of hours of footage and putting in photos like here's a picture of a drugs that I have to carry at all times to keep Diddy high here's mm-hmm. the name of the woman that gets the drugs here's a drug dealer here's a photo of me with this person here's the blood on the floor that night it's like we've never seen this much proof to make those claims so mm-hmm. it's definitely something to watch somebody said I just see in chat somebody said over 100 million to the first civil suit that got settled in less than 24 hours is that true What's that? Over a hundred million to the first civil suit that got settled in less than twenty-four hours. Did that happen with this? I have no idea. I'm just. I just he might be talking time. about uh, Cassie because that got settled pretty quickly. Oh, and, gotcha. Uh, and yeah, that dip, Diddy's basically just at the top of a gang, um, and the person that's above him is Lucy and Grange, which is just wild. Okay. Yeah. What do you think? Um, you made a mention that this might be an indicator to things that have happened with black culture. What yeah. do you What do you mean by that? I guess. So there has been a, just a very obvious corrosion in black culture like the music that i grew up in i was listening to temptations lauren hill like it was all about like family love it was real talent and then something just really shifted and it all became about derogatory debased gangster rap and it's the change that i've noted in a lot of my commentary and you know i think other people have like i asked the question there's there's a really in my view disgusting artist just in terms of the stuff that she publishes and the photos that she publishes, named Sexy Red, who they're now making a thing, right? Who makes the decision to sign a Sexy Red? You're telling me you have all the money and all the talent at your fingertips, and you sign a woman who, at her baby shower, uh, nine months pregnant, however pregnant she was, was twerking and had her butt cheeks in, like somebody's face was inside of her butt cheeks. That to me is very intentional because you're, sign- you're not signing her based on talent. You're not just signing her based on following. You're signing her because it's filth and you're perpetuating this filth into my community. So I, yeah, I've just, it's just something that I've noticed, something that I talk about often that are, we're intentionally being sold crack, it feels like, you know? So, trying to think of which direction I want to go. Um, Any direction you want. I'm an open book. Yeah, you're fine. There are, there are, okay, so there are like two kind of different ways of viewing this. Um, and I feel like you fall more to one side and then I'll give my side and then we can kind of see if we can iron out or, or figure where we are at, I guess, in the middle here. Um, 
I feel like when you look at the evolution of when we say like degenerate black culture or degenerate black music, I think we're generally talking about like the beginning of hip hop and rap and then kind of the evolution of that going forward, c- coming away from like the R&B singers and everybody like in the 50s, 60s, 70s or whatever, right? Yeah. Um, but hip hop isn't always filth. But yeah, I yeah, get, sure. I get yeah, your yeah, point. That, but that yeah, seems like the general. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it feels like when I, when I look at music or if I look at music that um, people create, oftentimes the music is a reflection of their circumstances. And you can see, uh, especially as America and, and the black communities became more conscientious maybe of the ghettos that they'd been kind of pushed into or the policing situations that they'd had to be a part of or drugs destroying their communities, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then those people turning to crime that you also see the music and the art kind of reflect those conditions. And then those pieces of art that get, that get created, especially the music, end up being like worldwide popular. Like the most popular genre of music in the, in the world is like hip hop and rap. So when I, when I look at people pushing certain stuff today, I'm like, okay, well, um, we got two really big, in my opinion, uh, I went to school for music, I don't know if you thought about the saxophone or whatever. So we had two really big contributions to the world of music from America. One was jazz um, mm-hmm. that came basically from the black community. And then the second was like rap and hip hop. Um, these forms of music become popular. People see that it's popular. They want to get involved. Obviously, the money men, the people on top, they want to kind of continue to push this because it's popular and everybody around the world consumes it. Mm-hmm. I feel like there are a lot of market forces at work that kind of perpetuate this and keep this happening. And that feels pretty satisfying to me to explain what's going on. So when we ask, like, why is it a woman uh, twerking with somebody's face and her butt cheeks? Because, well, for whatever reason, that's like what the worldwide culture seems to want to see right no. now. And then on the other side, um, it feels like from people... I don't want to just say conservatives, but I would say broadly speaking, um, I guess I'll say on your side in general, it feels like there's this idea that there's this much more intentional or like malevolent force yes. working behind the scenes. Yes, there is. And and so I'm, I'm, I'm going to push back on what you're suggesting here. You're suggesting that this is uh, this reflects the community and this, they're, they're sharing their stories in a way that makes sense. That's completely not true. Okay, WAP does not reflect the circumstances that black people are living in, you know, singing about your vagina and how hard it's getting pounded is not the circumstance of living in the hood. I come from nothing. It's not that that did not make me feel closer to the circumstances that I grew up in. And unfortunately, that's actually what people are telling black Americans. Like, actually, it's working the other way. You're putting something, you know, your eyes and your ears are the windows to the soul. And you're basically, when you celebrate someone, and I'm using Cardi B here as an example because I think people are probably more familiar with her than they are with Sexy Red. Uh Uh, When you put someone like that on the Grammys stage, which is again a decision being made. There's when I was growing up, the best, most talented people were on the Grammy stage. It was something you could watch with your family. Mm-hmm. And you still had poor people. Kind you still had bit. Yeah. Okay, you go. still mm-hmm. had poor people. You still had people that were living in the hood. Okay. We didn't need somebody talking about their vagina mm-hmm. uh, in order to feel seen. So what you're doing is you're setting the stage for younger girls who aspire to celebrities to say okay well if i mimic that behavior i too can become famous what you're actually doing is you're you're setting the idols that people are going to look up to and people are going to think this is what i should aspire to so it's actually working in the exact opposite way can i ask and, a question in, in, in that like evolution of things so if, I, if we look at like wap in particular um hasn't it generally been the case that music is always kind of pushing these sexual boundaries so it might have been elvis grabbing his crotch and dancing it might have been uh michael jackson's dancing is incredibly suggestive if you've seen that um it might have been in woodstock all the loser hippies talking about love sex and rock and roll and drugs um wouldn't like wop just be kind of like the next evolution in a long no, chain of pushing boundaries is not degeneracy okay and so here's what i'll say to you why don't you pull up the lyrics to wop and read them read them right now well, I don't. Why would I need to do cool, that? It's just Woodstock. We're just pushing. We're just pushing the boundaries a little bit. You, you, you probably have never even read the lyrics to WAP. I think I did because I think Ben Shapiro had no, a huge thing about he it. He couldn't and... have said. He, you may have seen him reading mm-hmm. the sanitized version of WAP, not mm-hmm. the one that is not sanitized. Like you, the the sanitized one, which is still bad, that she can perform at the Grammys, is what he read. Mm-hmm. You should read the lyrics to WAP before you make commentary that it's a reflection of what black Americans are living through or it's just somebody that's pushing a boundary. It's not that. How do you explain the fact that like WAP was like a number one like worldwide hit Because what I said to you is that they are artificially creating artists at this point. There's no question. And by the way, the Diddy docs, which, which I found to be a very compelling point, was that Diddy said to the guy, allegedly, uh, who was the producer that if he was willing to engage in homosexual behavior with him that he would get him producer of the year Grammy 
Okay, so what does that tell you? It means that the entire system is artificial. And by the way, this is something that Kanye said 10 years ago or however long ago it was when he took the trophy from Taylor Swift Mm -hmm. and said, like, this is all fake. This is not even based on merit anymore. And that is my point. The industry is not based on merit. It's not based on capitalism. It is based on selling ideas. So it is who do we want to artificially make the person that every black girl will look up to or who they will aspire to. Mm-hmm. And so I, I can definitely understand that like uh, maybe award shows can be rigged or people can think different things about, you know, who's being awarded based on merits for the Grammys or something like that. But like WAP was genuinely, do you think it wasn't genuinely a popular song or do you think that music execs have the ability to manufacture that desire publicly? The latter. So if you start playing something tons of times on the airways and it, you, the latter, you can definitely make something popular. There are songs that I don't even like that I've heard so much uh-huh. that I know every single lyric to. And I'm like, I don't even know how I know every single lyric to the song, but it's just been, it's received this many plays. You put it everywhere. You award the person, you invite them to bizarre circumstance. Like there's absolutely no reason that Cardi B is invited to sit down and ask questions to Joe Biden. So I can, no I, scenario, like I can kind of, unless you are really uh-huh. making an effort to legitimatize this person and to make this person aspirational. Again, this is not an insult to Cardi. Mm-hmm. I actually think that personality wise, she's, she's got a ton of talent and she's interesting. And I've said great things about her on Love and Hip Hop. And there are elements of her that make her a star. But what I am saying is that a lot of that is manufactured. And I, I, I just don't see how anybody when looking don't you think it's entirely possible or easily possible? So like, I feel like there's like so many things wrong with this. So one is why wouldn't competing record labels start pushing talent that's actually popular that people want to hear? I think that would be a big question. The second thing would be how can we explain the top-down domination of this type of media popularity through all of our reality TV shows, all of our TikTok stuff, all of our YouTube videos, and the music industry? And then how can you explain that all happening worldwide? Sure. Like it feels like that to try to explain this through. Um, through, through people that are exercising control on these platforms would require more control than anybody has ever been able to exercise on any platform ever. And they're doing it like on a multi-country, yes, multi-stage level. Yes, it's just called, it's very easy actually. It's a very basic concept it, it, pertaining to governments. They need propaganda. Hollywood is propaganda. You should, for those of you that are watching this live, go listen to the conversation that Joe Rogan had with Cat Williams, where he talked about all of this. And he said, I know you think that you're being entertained. And this is somebody that comes from inside of the industry. And he starts talking about the Diddy stuff, the idea that in order to climb higher, you kind of have to engage in nefarious behavior and how he was collecting all of this information. And he was speaking out about what was happening inside of the industry. And he said, it is twofold. You might be being entertained, but they are making decisions about what will entertain you. And a great circumstance in which he presented that is evidence of that is transgenderism. And he well, asked so, a qu- hold on, hold yeah, on. Okay. He asked a question which should be answered. Uh, he said to Joe Rogan, and he laughed about it. He was like, "A guy wears a dress on the red carpet, okay, and then the media tells you how great he wore the dress." And he's like, "If." He said, tell me one situation where he didn't wear the dress wonderfully, when, when he didn't wear the dress in a way that was amazing. It's because they have all agreed that this is the narrative. And then he talked about the fact that the record execs also own the publications that are saying that something is amazing or something is not amazing. And that is just plain old fashioned propaganda. So don't, you don't necessarily need to detach what we're talking about from your concept of what governments are interested in. It's always propaganda. So. I understand Cat Williams has said this. I also understand that Cat Williams was at one point in his life addicted to crack, and I think he's famous for losing a fight to a high school kid. <laughs> I think this like benched his career for a while. Okay, you can insult him, but that doesn't. I'm not insulting. Point. I'm just he, saying he that says I don't two plus know. two equals well, four. Wait, two plus two on. equals four. I'm not insulting him. I'm just saying that to like lean into his testimony, who also we would both acknowledge has a lot to gain by giving like incredulous testimony like this, like saying like, oh my god, these crazy things are happening, right? I don't know if I would just say, well, right, he does. You're the fact that you're talking about him and you're citing him and you know it, right? If anybody else was saying a similar thing, we'd say, well, okay, they're saying this because they have something to gain for it, right? He knows that this is going to be a a hot take and he knows that it's going to go viral if he says it and he knows he's going to get a lot of eyes on him for it so i think it's good to call that into question uh, i think the issue that i have when it comes to the the the, the accusation that everything is some top-down level propaganda is I feel like the conversation shifts away from the important stuff, which is why are people attracted to this type of stuff? Why do people vibe with it so much? Why are we replacing traditional better forms of media or more thought-provoking, I don't know what you would call it, forms of media, with this type of stuff? Instead of having conversations about the culture and the society, it's all fixated on some weird top-down plot to like 
control media consumption. I think you just like to be contrarian because I don't really, I don't understand the point that you're making here. Like, of course. Wait, hold on, wait, wait. Let me restate that. I'm sorry. The point I'm making is very clear. If I was going to, um, I've got a, I've got a thir- uh, almost 13 year old son in a few days, okay? If I was to see that he's consuming media, my go to would be like, hey, Nathan, why are you watching this? This is crazy. We need to look at something else. I need to, like, who are your friends? What are you looking at online? Like, we need to change your media consumption habits because this isn't working. I would never think, like, I think that the school is involved in disseminating media towards him and there's no way that we can change this. Because I feel like on, on your your side of the story, people are basically like, ho- ho- we're hopeless. There's nothing we can do. No, it's not hopeless. But you, if you want to be able to do something about something, you need to be able to acknowledge the something, right? Well, I mean, what, what was the so, thing so that we can't, do you about make it? Like it's a conspiracy. It's like, no, when I graduated high school, there wasn't a single trans kid. Now you've got like more than 50% of kids that think that they're other, that that, that is obviously propaganda. Clearly, there's just no, it's just not possible that they, that you didn't exist. Maybe there was one person and then all of a sudden everyone is. Sure, I think it's, it's okay like, to That can only line. happen, yeah. that can only happen through propaganda, right? Maybe, they're yeah, suddenly there's... being told it's an option. They're kids, right? You want to experiment and you want to be different. You're looking for a way to stand out. And so you hold on and, and in the classrooms you've got teachers that are reinforcing this narrative, this narrative mm-hmm. that is, yes, top down, right? It's like Hollywood in lockstep with the Department of Education that is making these options available. If it was natural, like when I graduated high school, there were gay kids, there were lesbian kids, there wasn't a ton of them, it wasn't an identity, that's another thing. This, yeah, the, that, identity I mean, then, thing yeah, the identity thing is very new. The identity is an interesting thing, I agree, yeah, for sure. And, and so it shows you who are they emulating, who are they Who are they copying when they do this stuff? Like, because it's an option, it's just being presented to you. It's obviously not natural if it didn't exist naturally. And I so, agree, but culture is a very complicated culture thing. Culture is not Movies a complicated are, thing. It's so it's, complicated. It's, I think they governments are, they pray are deciding. that they have the amount of control over culture that you think they do. There's no shot that anybody would be able to top down control well, that the, much stuff. Well, like I said, there have been a lot of a lot of evidence that has come out, whether you're looking at the Jeffrey Epstein case or you're reading through the 72-page document uh, for the Diddy lawsuit well, that I mean, suggests even the Jeffrey, that the government is involved. Even on the Jeffrey Epstein case, like what's suggesting government involvement here? What do you mean? What is? What do you mean? What's suggesting? Like what part of the Jeffrey Epstein case is like? Oh my God, the government is like playing a part in this. Uh, well, the fact that he had ties to the Mossad and the CIA and that when they raided his home, he had his face and about, what was it, six different passports? Who can, who can issue passports? Sure, but when we who, look who, at it... Who can issue you a different identity different, in different I don't countries. know about different identities, but for passports, I imagine you can get that illegally or you can just get it from countries depending on citizenship okay. status. Well, but, he, he, but what I'm saying is that like, for, for when we look at Epstein, right? Epstein was a billionaire, right? I why was he a billionaire? Why? I because of trading or whatever he did. I'm not no, really sure. No, that's um, the question. No, nobody sure. knows why. Yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, but has, there's like a million dollars. Different, sure, there's lots of people where I don't know how they made their money. But to fill in the gaps of all of this with some. No, you should always know how somebody became a billionaire. Like, that's like a very easy thing. Like you should, somebody should just be like, I became a billionaire, and you have no idea how. Like I'm sure there are tons of people who are like billionaires I sold that the aren't, product. You know why Elon Musk has money. You know why Jeff Bezos has money. You should not say we can't connect the dots on how this person became a billionaire that was able the to purchase filings an island. Aren't always going to be public. That like, oh well, I can figure out exactly the way this person became a billionaire. If they don't work in like public traded companies or something, how will you ever know? There's no way you're going to know that. He did. Then what's the question? The, 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 it's not a question. It's just nobody understands why Jeffrey Epstein or his brother have billions of dollars. Well, what, you just said, he did he have a ton of shares in publicly traded companies? What do you mean? Did he have a ton like of shares? Like when we asked, for instance, customers? like, so here's a question. Do you know how Jeff Bezos made his money or how Elon Musk made his money? I know that Jeff Bezos created Amazon, and I know that Elon Musk has created a ton of things. Tesla, you've got Starlink. Okay, kind of, so not really. Bezos made his money because of the appreciation of shares of Amazon that he had a huge stake in, right? And, and Elon Musk made a lot of his money. Initially, it was on PayPal and a couple of ventures, and then because he had a huge equity stake mm-hmm. in, uh, in SpaceX and Tesla especially. That's where they made their money, is ownership of stock of publicly traded companies. That's what I'm saying. We can look at those people. We can say, we know how they made their money. So did I don't think Epstein had massive shares in publicly traded companies, did he? So he wouldn't have made did it. Did you in actually look into the Epstein case? Or are you just, because I can't tell right now if your thing is just to be contrarian. Okay, hold on. No, I'm, be, I'm being me. serious. No, I'm asking you because it yeah. seems like you're just like, whatever your position is, I'm going to take the opposite and I'm going to say something really quickly and try to say, well, how do we know? Blah, 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 blah. And it's like, that's actually quite boring. Sure. I you understand. know what I mean? Like, so it's like, dude, like, just, like, let's actually have a real conversation because tons of stuff is happening right now. A lot of stuff is being exposed, right? Mm-hmm. People are, for the first time, able to grasp a theory that finally makes sense, right? It finally makes sense. It makes sense that there is a black ring operating in D.C. because we don't understand why we keep sending our politicians to D.C. and then it's like they completely serve somebody 
anybody other than the American people, right? So when that Jeffrey Epstein case got exposed, and if you were following it and reading the I documents, I did follow it. I read the entire document, it was, it was, the eighty-page yeah. report that okay, came out great. from the government. Did a report you're, on the prison where the he Diddy supposedly thing, got killed, and you're realizing yeah. how many artists have stood up and said this exact same thing was going on. Now you have somebody that has filed something with proof saying it's going on, and then you just have like a destiny being like, oh, what if it's not going on? What if it's not? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, well, sure. So here's like a super- oh, maybe WAP is just really just that amazing. People just love talking about vaginas and like mopping the floor. It's like you can do that thing, okay. but it's not interesting. You know what I mean? Okay, sure. All right. It's like, here's it's, just an easy test question so I can get my bearings straight. What do you think about the 91 or so indictments for Donald Trump? What do you mean? Do you think that those are credible indictments that have credible evidence behind them? Well, it speaks to me specifically about which indictment you're talking about. So let's the Mar-a-Lago let's, let's, let's Mar case. Let's, I actually haven't followed that one, so I'm okay. not going to push back on that one, okay. but I can tell you the ones that I have followed and I've given a an answer on. Like, obviously, we've never seen the media or the justice system go after any president in the way that, that they doesn't have. matter we you could say the same about p diddy you've never seen the media go after a black artist i didn't like say this it did it didn't i didn't finish my statement what do you, what do you why are you saying it doesn't matter why did you just say that i'm just, just it could be that nobody's ever done something this but i haven't before you, you're so contrary in that you haven't even I'm let not, me finish. Why do you keep you calling haven't me even let, You haven't even let me finish my sentence. And you said that doesn't okay. matter. It's like, what do you... What do you because what, you gave a point that was irrelevant. I, know, but like, you, I don't understand what you're objecting to. I, you, you asked said me that, a question. You said the media has never gone after somebody like Hold this on, before. No, no. Which you asked me yeah. a question. Mm-hmm. I started to answer it by saying the media has never gone after anyone like this before. Okay. And then you just said, it doesn't matter. It's like, can I answer the ahead. question? Can, yeah, like, or you just got to like contradict yeah, right I'm away. not contradicting. I'm just yeah, fighting the crazy narratives are. that prevent anybody from having a real analysis of any of the things going on. But you can lay out your whole thing about All what right, you think then, about All right, then, you know, since you know my narrative, even though you asked the question, I wasn't able to answer it. You can I'm answer the question. I'm glad that you, you defeat the narrative. No, we're good. We're good. I'm not going to have you wait. ask. I'm not going to actually have you ask a question and then cut me off and say that I'm parroting a narrative when I haven't even told you what my opinion was that's not you being interesting that's you being obnoxious i think that you're trying to avoid answering the question by being cut off by you i said you could finish it if you want <laughs> you're trying to avoid answering the question quite literally i was trying to answer the question and you cut me off so we're good on that we can move on and talk about something other than trump and his 95 indictments i think it's 91 or 92 okay um okay well what, what are we talking about that won't get you as triggered <laughs> Okay. I, I just honestly, I, I, like I said to him began, began this, I said, I am an open book. I just. I'm just curious what you think about the Trump indictments. Do you think that a civil suit that's filed where there isn't a grand jury that looks over it, there's not like federal, it's not like a DA case, not like a federal prosecutor. Do you think that the Diddy stuff is like rock solid? Do you think that's really, really, really important to look at? But then when we look at indictments that have gone to grand juries that have then issued warrants or subpoenas or whatever, I was just curious if you think that the credibility on that side is as heavy as the P. Diddy stuff. I was really happy to answer that question. Would you like me to answer it? Sure. So I would say that you are comparing two cases that are, are not similar, and I'll tell you why they aren't similar. In the case of Diddy, you have somebody that has no power that is filing this and producing evidence to say that the justice, essentially the same thing that people that defend Trump are saying, the justice system is corrupt, right? That these people are responding and being motivated by things like the LAPD's involvement that night in writing a fake police report, if his allegations are true, and he had photos, and said that he was the person that said call 911, and then seeing the media report on it and lie about what happened at that studio is very scary. It's scary if, if, if unless he faked these blood photos, which is a, a plausibility, mm-hmm. but it shows you that there are people that are sitting at the top that have a ton of power, right? So the people that are acknowledging that and then also saying that those same people, that that same network of individuals that can make up allegations and make them go away with the media or stay or, and make it a big deal because of the media are defending Trump and what's happening to him. So this isn't, they're actually, these two things are not at conflict with one another, what's happening with Diddy and what's happening with Trump. It's actually, um, they complement one another in terms of what we're saying. Now, the only case, I've, I've followed two of them, mm-hmm. uh, the Fannie Willis one. Well, can I ask a question about the LAPD thing? Yeah. So if we're worried because in the P. Diddy case, it looks like the LAPD at the very top might have been involved with something, if that's the, if that's the claim. I mean, isn't Donald Trump at the very, very, very top if he's the president? Isn't he literally like the top guy in the world? He doesn't control the courts. And that's, I mean, hold on, hold on. The point of exactly being is that if they feel that they have a a person that they cannot control, so if there is this blackmail ring that exists and it's starting to look like there is definitively, and I very much believe that, and I am not ashamed to say that I, it is is pretty much the only thing that makes sense in Hollywood is what I read in these documents, Mm -hmm. Um, uh, then it would be clear as to why it is that when you are 
existing outside of the ring or you are somebody that cannot be controlled, you are somebody that is attacked. Now, again, we have heard many artists, and I, I like that we have this example in Hollywood because we don't need to go down the path of Trump derangement. We can actually talk about people that we don't feel any way about, right? Diddy, I don't have an issue with Diddy. You don't have an issue with Diddy. We can look at this case more objectively because people, I think, do get so uh, about Trump that you, you can't just look at things objectively. If what he, that person is, is alleging- that, wait, do you think that's what happened here? I mean, I, 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 you did jump, I'm, I'm glad it, it's live and you can go back and watch it, but like I didn't get to, you asked me a question and then before I could answer my question, you did say like narrative and I'm like, okay, that feels like the, the Trump derangement trap. I don't wanna do it. I wanna have a productive conversation about the plausibility that people that are extremely powerful mm-hmm. are blackmailing people and these people can't talk out, don't, can't speak out because whatever they have on them on camera is, scary you know there there's justin bieber i think there's also something going on with him he is his uh pastor said you know pray for them there are evil forces that in hollywood kind of at the same time as this cat williams i know he used to do crack whatever has spoken out about this there's been a lot of artists that have spoken out about this kanye west has spoken out about this about you know the control and the network that's happening within hollywood so i think instead of um i don't know trying to dismiss these people as crazy or crackheads or whatever it is you want to dismiss them as when enough people say something including michael jackson who's dead maybe there's some truth to it like can we examine whether or not this might be true especially when somebody is such an underdog like a producer and does something like this i think analyzing who's saying what i think is important but i think that when we say that somebody's an underdog so we're going to believe them because they give a story that we might happen to like or plays into something else that we believe i mean i would just be critical of the underlying material like if the sources are a few people like everybody stands to gain something when it comes to viral stuff everybody yeah. knows that when you have outrageous claims evidence. to make yeah and if he has evidence yeah. i think that's interesting otherwise i would have said i don't know it's frivolous. like there's sure. you can always sue a rich person but i'm saying i'm also saying that like a charge is a charge or a claim is a claim or a file case is a file case it'll be interesting to see what ends up playing out in right. court and, and then I'm, we I'm actually to see that yeah, I'm keen okay. to see that that's what I want to mm-hmm. see I'm not condemning the person I'm not a person that believes that you uh, I, I would hope and I obviously have lost faith in in the court system in some ways but I would hope that it works the way it's supposed to work and that it will take more evidence and that he has to appear in front of people and, and show us more evidence and show us more video evidence of what's going on but so when you it, say- it, it, what I will say is that it looks credible okay on, when you say that you've set. lost faith in the court system, does that mean that if a guilty verdict is returned, you'll think it was a good case, but if a no, non-guilty verdict is returned, are you going to... That's not Okay. Mm-mm. Well, why would, you, why would you preface with I've lost faith, faith in the court system? Because I have seen some circumstances in which things that should not happen do happen, and a good example of that, if you want to talk about the craziest case that I followed in a long while, it was the defamation one, where the jury awarded, she was asking for, what, 10 million? And they awarded her for 400 or 800 million just to like bankrupt Trump and her allegations had expired, but they created a new law in New York so that she could bring them forth about something that she says happened in 1996. What is that whack lady's name? She got, and she, she was so- Wait, are you talking about when they extended the- Carol, um, E. Jean Carroll. Statute of limitations yes. to allow people to sue people yes. relating to- And then rape. she got funded uh, to reopen this. They, they changed the law. And then she got funded by the person who is basic, I don't wanna call him a Democrat operative, but he, he obviously is very involved in the Democratic Party. The person that um, started LinkedIn is the one that funded her to do this lawsuit. I mean, it, the whole thing is the craziest thing I've ever seen. It's just like making wasn't new this, laws. Wasn't this, I thought this law and was then, changed in New York a while ago. No, I don't it think wasn't. it was specifically for Trump, No, it was wasn't. It? Nope, it was specifically after she went on and was doing the rounds on, uh, and th- those were wacky when she was like, I don't even know, when he was like, what is rape? Anderson Cooper asked her and she was like, I think most people think rape is sexy. It's not someone jumping on you and da 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 da. You know, it'd be great for this if you could bring up clips like that because it would be awesome for people to be able to watch it. But she was so clearly clinically insane. There's no, she was so insane that even Anderson Cooper had to go to commercial, MSNBC had to go to commercial. So this is not a woman, you know, that was making what any person who can listen to somebody interview about their rape would say are credible allegations. But there was just such hatred for Trump that they just made it happen. And in no circumstances, I, 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 I can't a, imagine this, what circumstances somebody asks awarded? for like 10 million and the judge is like, no, you're going to give you 400 million. Other than we hate Trump yeah. so much and we hope to bankrupt was this him. A, what was this, a jury trial? Uh, there were multiple parts of this lawsuit, but uh, it was... Because if it went to trial and if it was a jury, then yeah, it was it was jury trial. Yes. Does anybody have a link to that rape clip? I'm curious if anybody yeah, has ever heard yeah, conversation. Yeah, it's, it's rape. We just got to look at it. It's it's so nutty and so crazy, 
and they just kept going with it everywhere she went left and right people could not hold a conversation with her she was so unstable and she couldn't even define what rape was she was just saying i think rape is just like you know when someone thinks you're sexy so it's like so did trump just think you were sexy she had no witness i mean i've just never seen anybody able to get for or however many millions of dollars she got with absolutely not a shred of proof in a case that shouldn't have even have been brought forward according to according to your own statute of limitations. Also, people so are saying that, that the 400 faith. million is the, that's for the business fraud case. Maybe the... Uh, sorry, yeah, I'm mixing numbers. What was mm-hmm. the, how much was she awarded for you guys that are like, uh, yeah, checking? She was awarded, they gave her more than she even asked for. Yeah, they literally extended the law. It was in, the whole thing was so rotten to its core. That makes you lose faith, right? That makes you lose faith in the justice system. That's not saying that there aren't cases. There are different judges. There are different, you know, different juries. Some with Trump, it's hard because people are passionate about him one way or the other. So you're, it's it's going to be hard not to find a jury that is corrupt, especially when you are in New York. But I don't see how any person can objectively look at what happened there. Wait, what does that mean? In a corrupt jury? Uh, like like emotionally corrupted because when it comes to Trump, people tend to feel either. I love him so much or I absolutely hate him and he's the end of the world. So I think it's hard to get a jury that, you know, is going to be fair in that circumstance because he's so... Do you know, where is P. Diddy being sued at? Do you know what the venue is? I'm, I want to say L.A. I want to say L.A., but definitely fact check me on that so I don't spread misinformation. Uh, I'm only asking because I see a couple people. Oh, so for this, it says Rodney, uh, Lil Rod Jones. Oh, New York. Producer. That's right. It is in New York. Wait, that is correct. Does that mean that the the opening up of the statute of limitations for the Trump suit is the same same thing that's allowing this court case to go through then? No, no. He, you got to look at what he's suing them for. This all happened recently. The Trump thing happened in '96. Just so you, just so we're clear, this happened in t- 2022, 21. All of the allegations are recent. Yeah. It just happened. He was working on an album that he dropped like last year or something. It's not from 1996. Oh, okay. I thought the way you were talking, I thought these were earlier allegations. No, 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 no. This all just happened and he obtained a ton of proof because of it. Gotcha, gotcha. Have you reached out to this guy to try to have a conversation with him or anything? No. I would hope that that would be... I would imagine. I mean, I don't. I don't know if you would be able to while you're. I don't know while you're in court. I'm sure his lawyer would say, "Don't speak until things are done." And I'm. Uh, my guess is that because of the powerful names that are listed in this lawsuit, uh-huh. they're going to want to just settle it and be done with it. But the photos that are pictured there, it's going to be very hard, I think, to come back from it without some sort of an explanation. Um, I mean, he named names. Well, I think the problem. My imagination would be the problem is that even if the photos show sexual acts or whatever. The difficult part is going to be proving that these were part of a conspiracy to blackmail or something like that, right? Because just photos of people having sex or doing whatever stuff isn't probably enough unless you've got like text messages showing some pattern of. Yeah, I think, I think, yeah, I guess you, what you're saying is that people could then say, okay, well, they're all having sex, but they're doing it willingly. But what he's alleging is that Diddy's team gets these people drunk and high and drugged and then brings in women that are they know are minors this is one part of his allegations and then these people have sex with them or they have like have gay relations and like everyone's doing it everyone's doing it and then they do something that's like gay while they're high and then he owns them because he has this stuff that's on cameras now explaining yeah could you could you technically even after it's all exposed say like oh well maybe they all did it willingly sure you could always sure. well i mean the yeah. burden would be on him to prove yeah. at least uh, which is why i really want this sure. to go through because uh, there's just been a lot of artists who have said this over the years mm-hmm. that there's like some sort of gang that's operating in hollywood and i would just like to see these allegations play out you know mm-hmm. and i think everyone should want that by the way what do you think on a, on a broad Diddy, level? Diddy. Yeah. Okay, so you keep calling me contrarian. Um, on a broad level, the, the reason why I tend to fight back against the overarching narratives is because I feel like they leave listeners feeling very powerless. Um, so when I talk to my audience, I want people to vote. I want people to be politically active. I want people to you know, take an interest in their local city council stuff, their local races, because I think that people getting involved politically, especially voting, is a really important way to change the landscape of our country um, on a local level or on a national level. I agree. Um, I also think that people talking to their friends and family and spreading ideas and messages, I think these things are important as well. But I think that the, the reason why I push back sometimes against the broader 
when I say narrative, by the way, I don't necessarily mean that it's like conspiracy theory or whatever, but when I, when, the reason why I push back against like the more broader narrativizing of things happening culturally is because I feel like it leaves listeners feeling very disempowered. I remember when I was in Austin and I asked Alex Jones on stage after he'd done another one of his big rants about the deep state and blah, blah, blah. I think I asked him, I was like, well, what do you want your listeners to do? And it was the first time I ever heard him be quiet for more than five seconds because he had no answer. So I'm curious for you, um, when you talk about this overarching stuff, you want to bring people's attention to it, what is like a Candace Owens listener supposed to take from that? And what are they supposed to do in the real world, I guess, to like fight against some of the yeah, stuff? Yeah, I mean, I, I always tell people what they can do. Like one of the biggest pushes is telling parents that they that they should be involved in their kids' education. And you saw that. That was, mm-hmm. that was conservatives who brought forth that movement of parents actually showing up and demanding changes mm-hmm. um, in the textbooks and finally recognizing how far things had gone because we allowed the Department of Education to just spike the ball uh, for, for decades, you know, actually paying attention to what they do. I always tell people to get involved in local elections because they matter more. Um, and I think that a lot of the corruption that's taking place in Washington, D.C. is what we're, what we're speaking about because it seems like no matter who we elect, when we send them to Washington, D.C., it's almost like their allegiance is to the lobbies. And by the way, I believe that lobbying should be illegal. I, I believe that we need term limits. These are the things that um, would, I think, affect change overnight. And so I hope that in speaking to those things, when people say, what would be the first things that you would do if you were in office? Um, I always say, elect people that are saying those exact same things. Don't elect people that are then gonna go to DC and make it their own business, you know, and, and want to grow the government because it's making them money and they're accepting money from lobbyists. That's why I always point to my favorite congressman, Thomas Massey, because I think he does a really good job of actually representing Americans and American interests. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, I'm not a person, I haven't taken the black pill as they, as how it's termed, taking the black pill, and I'm like, there's nothing you can do. Mm-hmm. But we have to understand what it is that we're fighting, and we can't be scared to recognize a conspiracy. You know, A lot of times we're just talking, there's questions that we have, and we just say, why is this person doing this? Like I said, the Diddy lawsuit didn't make me feel hopeless. It actually made me go, oh, okay, if this is what's actually happening in Hollywood, then it makes sense. You know, what do you think for um, when you look at black community stuff specifically, um, what do you what would you think are the big like two or three things that the black community in the United States needs to do to kind of save itself from yeah. the whole of, you know, fatherless children and mm-hmm. welfare consumption and abortion, and everything else that they're kind of stuck in right now? Well, the first thing I think is is to educate yourself about where it's all coming from. I think black Americans need to be educated on black history, not in the Democrat textbook way, but in the real way of understanding where all these initiatives came from, because a lot of times black Americans are asking the government to solve what the government created, which welfare programs obviously destroyed the black family. And it was the intention of Lyndon Baines Johnson to do that because he was an avowed racist and spent decades in the Senate voting against every measure to give black Americans any measure of freedom until he was basically forced with a figurative bullet to his head to sign the Civil Rights Act. to restore some calm nationally. So I, I think, first of all, everything begins with education, and I think that people that are nefarious understand that, which is why the 70% illiteracy rate that we're seeing across inner city communities is, is in my opinion, by design. 40% of students now can't pass a literacy exam, excluding black America. When we say by design, who would want that? Who, people that want to control you. There's a reason why when we had slave codes, um, Slaves weren't allowed to learn how to read. When you're not educated, anything I tell you becomes your reality. If I, I can understand that, but like that, but slaves like worked and did stuff, right? Yeah, I yeah, feel so like so do the American, so do, so do Americans. Every day we go to work, and our money gets sent overseas. Well, but, not, but they have to like be literate to go to work, right? I feel like illiterate black people that are doing gang violence probably aren't serving any system very well. No? It, you are because you keep voting in the people that are taking more power from you. Right? Do you think so, those people are voting much? The black gangbangers and stuff? I think, yes, black people do vote and it's not wait, just... Hold on, wait, 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 hold on. To be very clear, I didn't say black people because I don't think that all black people are like this. I'm mm-hmm. saying that like the, specifically the ones that are illiterate, involved in gang violence and are unemployed. Do you think that they're like out there voting in, in a meaningful way that's changing the, the, I guess the political landscape of the United States? Are they having like a meaningful impact on the electoral system? Yeah, so even if people are fully illiterate they will vote if they have an emotional reason to vote, which is what the Democrats very much understand. I want to actually want to correct my language there and say, mm-hmm. because I think it's it's uniparty at this point, um, that they will continue to vote emotionally. So when you see something like, you know, black people rioting and looting in the streets because of what happened to George Floyd, what you are dealing with is people that are being intentionally um, misinformed about circumstances so that they are emotionally reactive because I mean look I have children I have a three-year-old I I know 
what it means to be ignorant. My child can't read. He is emotionally reactive. And if you can turn an entire population into an emotionally reactive toddler that has no facts or no understanding of history, you can make them do whatever it is that you want them to do. So my- I guess it's, just, it's interesting to me because it feels like the most, like we would say the most mind controlled people in America are actually like young white college kids. And those guys have lots of literacy and lots of education. So yeah. I don't know why we wouldn't send black people into the, like the college actually, and turn them woke instead of- Actually, no, the, <laughs> but that's actually interesting. I'm glad you brought up college because if you look factually speaking, Americans have, are getting dumber and dumber and dumber and dumber and yet we have never handed out more degrees, which is interesting. Like I what mean, do you mean like, when you say Americans are getting dumber, what do you mean? Uh, by what that? I mean, I mean talking about in terms of ha passing tests, passing exams, the literacy level in America, everything is actually going down, and like SAT scores, everything is going down, and which is why they're now like, let's just abolish the SAT. This sort of a thing that they're that sure, which some I think they've saying, gotten rid of and brought is, back in some places. Yeah. But I mean, like I don't but know if the point, same my, people no, getting illiterate no, 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 are the same people that are going to college and getting degrees. Yeah, right? we're, we're handing out degrees and yet people, so people think they're educated when actually they're just brainwashed bots and they're quite stupid. They are stupid. And, and that's the magic of a college degree is that it makes people think that they're smart, right? And, they're, and it's, it's astonishing. You, you really should examine that how every decade within America, people are getting dumber and dumber and dumber. It's and one of the things that my colleague Matt Walsh did, which is really incredible, is he read a letter that was written by a civil rights soldier who's like 17, 17 years old or 18 years old, had no education, and it sounded like poetry. Like unbelievable the way people used to be able to speak and write before we created the Department of Education, uh, which in my view it is there just to exist to turn you into a mindless bot that will serve the government's interests. I mean, we can say that, but the reality is, is aside from the cultural thing, on the economic side, America has like one of the most productive workforces, maybe the most productive workforce in the world. When you say productive um, workforce, what do you mean by that? Um, productive in an economic sense is how many, how many like units of things are produced by one hour of labor from a US worker. And I'm pretty sure US worker productivity is higher than it ever has been. I think that continues to climb. It's one of the biggest complaints about uh, lack of increase of wage growth, for instance, is that wage growth doesn't seem to have tracked to the massive increase of productivity of the average American worker or the median American worker. Um, I just think that like if you wanted to control, it just seems strange that we've got two completely and totally diametrically opposed ways of controlling society. One is to make black people specifically, I guess, illiterate so mm -hmm. that they are easier to manipulate, even though I seriously doubt these people even vote that much. And then the other is to make people the most literate by sending them to college and have them read. They're not the most literate. That's what I'm telling you. They are not the most literate. You think people that graduate because, with college yes. degrees can't read well? Yeah, I, what I'm telling you is yes. That's what I'm telling you. They're not the most literate. We're, what would I look up we to are verify not, that? Are, if I wanted to see, like, you got to do, you got to do the research in your I own time. I have done the research. Okay, I'm, I'm happy. It's not to, true. What do you, what do you mean? It's not true. Just what, what I said. As, people, as just, an owner of a college degree, median wage compared to that person is like, you can go to college for four years and spend a hundred thousand dollars getting a degree in gender studies. Please do not tell me that you believe that that person is educated first of all, or highly Wait, literate. Well, first of all, like it's, more it's than half a person. degree is awarded or awarded for STEM related things, number one. Number two, $100,000 is a way over the average for paying for any degree. Well, that's what I paid, and so I'm just. What did you go to school for? The average, and you, as, long, as far as I'm concerned, you can look this up, but if you are going to school, you're probably spending in America about $30,000 a year, minimally if you're out of state. Isn't the average can, amount just of. Just look it up, you got it, Google, right? What, like, what, the, what state are we in? Isn't the what are we in Miami? Let's, I mean, let's go to look up University of Florida. Pardon, what state are we in? Florida? Yeah. Go to University of Florida out of tuition rates. Because what do you mean? $100,000 sounds about right. Yeah, but we're looking at, so one, this is for- $28,659 out of state. Correct. $30,000. So, yep, so one, this is the uh, out of state tuition. Yes, that's what I Number just said. Number two, hold on, this is the sticker price. Nobody pays this for school. You've got Pell Grants, you've got different types of student aids, you've got tons of different scholarship initiatives. Very, 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 very few people so actually pay I'm right, this but price. you're trying to make me wrong. Well, so no, no, I, no, I paid that you're price. Right. No, no, what I'm I paid saying that, is that price, so I, saying, I paid back my loan, so you're not gonna convince me that very few people are paying this. My sisters paid that price and they paid back the, so you, you're just saying, like and yes my granted my school was more expensive it was I think thirty five thousand dollars there you go the average twenty nine thousand so if we look at if we you look can't at just the say average, you were right Candace sure. so fifty one percent you're of, not going to get hurt yeah, so fifty one percent of bachelor's degrees for students graduate with an average of twenty nine thousand four hundred dollars in student loan debt right. So that's only 51% of people, I guess, that acquired debt, and then their average debt is about $29,400. Are, are you, I don't get what the point is of you doing this. 
The point are, I'm are you trying that, to say the po- the point I'm saying is that one the sticker price for an out of state tuition school is not what I would use as the median price you need to pay for a four year degree. Number one, number two, very few people actually I didn't, pay. We didn't talk about that because I said this is the median price. I said it is utterly absurd that people are spending one hundred thousand dollars to come out with a degree. We weren't talking you about. Said, we weren't debating the median price. Studies. Sure, but number you one, just, you're going for out of state. If I'm in yes, state, my I, tuition is six thousand four hundred dollars. I getting literally a said out of state. I, I actually said out of. State. State. Yeah, but why do I care about that uh, that number? I don't get where you're going. The, the point on, of wait, wait, when wait, we wait, started wait, wait, this conversation, wait, 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 wait. I was just specific... saying that there are individuals no. that are going to school that are spending one hundred thousand dollars. Right? That's, I don't know what that has to do with anything. In gender studies. Yeah, but we're going... talking about. Yeah, I'm sure, and I could probably find people with a million dollars student loan debt. They got an even dumber degree okay. than gender studies and basketball women, or whatever. But in general, that's not the cost of a college degree. And in general, college degrees confer huge wage premiums onto the people that earn them. These are like no, they don't, and that is the reason why you have so many young women that are. And, and this is this is why. You know, I think that what you actually do here is harmful. And I'm going I'm to tell you, okay. I'm, no, I'm going no, to tell you, let, let me, me finish let me, my let me explain. Hold on, I'm explain. sorry, because I've done a lot of research on college degrees and a lot of research no. on education and every single mm. thing that you're saying sounds really good on like a culture war perspective. But when you look at an war. actual economic perspective, when you look at actual firms yeah. that hire people and when you look at the actual median wages given to people that even have some college biggest education, regret, all of it, is me going all of it, that's great for you, but for the average American, that's just not true. None of these numbers are found on average. You will never find data that supports the idea that high school earners on average are earning college degree earners or that 90% of people are going to school for a basketball. School. Weaving. Do not listen Why to would him. you go to please trade school? Learn a trade real, school? Learn trade a real on craft. Average. Why would you go to trade school? Please go to trade school. Please do not end up. And I talk about this on stage the whole time. And I'm and I'm on the universities. I did two universities this year. Please, if you do not know what you want to do, do not go spend a ton of money putting yourself in debt to go into society already having debts that you need to pay off to make twenty five thousand dollars a year in a career path that you didn't even know that you wanted to Why take. Why would a four year degree earner make twenty five thousand dollars a year? To destiny, like and and by the way. I I am thank you for saying she's right destiny I am so right please go to trade school and don't listen to this and 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 listen to me because I got I bought into this rhetoric because I was in high school and you're gonna it's gonna be great you're gonna go and you're gonna take a blah blah blah, blah. and then when you get out in the real world it's gonna be great you're gonna have a better position and you're gonna make more money it is a lie that you is go to school for? that I don't care what website he is looking on like to, to tell you that is a lie the overwhelming majority of people and I'm so glad people in the chat are saying that I am right because the overwhelming amount of people are shocked when the real world then smacks them in the face and that lie, that dream that was sold to you by your guidance counselors in high school, uh-huh. that's gonna be so great and you're gonna be able to make more money and you just start to realize that it is absolutely crap. And I really to- would like to say, yeah. Do not disrespect people that go to trade school. Because I, I just disrespect, that I'm not just disrespecting anybody so that goes to trade school. What are you talking like, about? It's just like, you Wait, why like, are we virtue you, signaling on this? Because you shouldn't go to you, trade no, no, school no, no, because no. if you go to college, you, you should, make more money. That's not true. It's just not true. What do you mean it's not true? That's not true. You can, li- like, quite literally, you can be the person that goes to trade school and you will make so much money doing jobs that actually bring value to society. Computer people programmers don't bring value to the society. Mechanical are, engineers don't bring value to society. Not, that, if, if you want to be a mechanical engineer, yes, by if you know what you want, to do and you know you want to be a chemical engineer I'm not saying nobody should go to college I'm saying too many people are going to college they are putting themselves in debt for things that they don't even know what they want to do and they get out into the world and they can't make any money and it is a struggle and they are they are suffering I'm watching these girls I know that people on the right like to mock these girls who are crying on TikTok who are saying like you know I got out of college and here's how no money that I can make I didn't know this I actually feel bad for those girls because we have to just stop lying to people about what college is it's been inflated you when are you look you at like black community the worth stuff. of it isn't in, in the black community isn't one of the reasons why women are starting to out earn black men is because they're going to school and they're going to college and they're actually getting degrees and they're getting real careers isn't that I, one of the biggest contributing factors for I, the, I don't know that okay um okay final question i think by the way by, i think yeah. women by the way all across the board are graduating at higher rates than men mm-hmm. but i i do want to say what because i, I do want to make a point about what you do because I did see that you did okay. the, you did a video and you were like taking the side of mm. hoes, like you saw this Candace. Did she say selfish bitch? I must have misheard. She's a selfish bitch. Should, should mention not marry her. That's my- Holy! Oh, I'm gonna get triggered. I feel like I might lose my mind this episode. I agree that these people can be cringe sometimes, but you're saying she's a narcissistic that men shouldn't marry? You're taking that so f- far. It's a partnership. It's a bond. It's forever. But there's no difference between dating it, and marriage. There is a other difference. There is a difference. You just ignored it because you've got a dialogue tree and a narrative you want to push and you're not going to engage with anything she's saying. She gave you a perfectly legitimate answer. It is a more permanent form of relationship. It's solidified by law. It's not something you just walk away from her breakup from. It's a commitment ideally for a lifetime. She gave you a good answer. You just don't like to hear it because it was a good one and you wouldn't expect
expect to get rid of OnlyFans girl to give you one. And now you're surprised that a bunch of girls that you thought were just gonna be titty bimbos are actually giving you a run for your money. You're, you're still talking. <laughs> okay. I'm so insecurity coming out of it. <laughs> The women I today are very low value. Bash. Bash I'm, not bashing. I'm not bashing. Hold on. I'm not bashing. The women are low value, that they're going to have worse relationships and lives. And they're going to be unhappy. But I'm not bashing them. Absolutely fascinating to see how someone's mind can be so warped. You know, in the same way that I think it's, it's fascinating. It's fat, bro. I've been respectful in listening to, you know, your lifestyle. No, so you're not respectful. I'm actually sitting down with hoes on the whatever podcast. And you oh, did. You were being so rude to that yeah, lady yeah. that made the TikTok. Oh, my God. Okay. I, but the point is, is that you then went through you this. You called her a bitch. You, you then went through this video mm -hmm. and just tried to justify these lifestyles, right? I don't think I was trying to justify the you lifestyle. Were, what I was doing is I was fighting it back against the insane judgment from one side to you the were. other. We live in America. People should be able to live the lifestyles See, they want. And that, as long as they're not harming other people, I listen, think everybody has the right to pursue And that. I just want to say to that, to people that are watching this, to anybody that you follow, literally, mm -hmm. you should take a measure and really ask yourself whether or not that person is telling you that stuff because they believe it or whether or not that person is telling you something that ultimately it feels good because then it means that you can remove yourself from responsibility. Oh, I see, yeah, it's fine. I can be a hoe, whatever, whatever, whatever. But it's going to lead you to misery, right? And so I tell people, you know, I've seen a lot. I've been through a lot. I've lived through a lot. Very proud of myself where I've ended up. And I'm trying to provide people the shortcuts. And I'm trying to tell you that, yes, I understand that as a young woman, if you jump onto OnlyFans, you can make money and you can make money very quickly. But I am also telling you that if you do that, you will, the overwhelming majority of people, can you find an exception? Sure, will regret that sort of a lifestyle. And, I think and, I'd and, probably and, agree and with you. And to these young people yep. that are listening to you doing the like, YOLO, if it makes you happy, don't. I am telling you, d like throw this out. It is trash. Like I agree. You, you shouldn't do OnlyFans not, as a young person. You should not be aspiring to you shouldn't do only open as young person. relationships. You should go to college and get a degree instead. <laughs> somebody that's just holding up a you know a mirror to tell you that you're great and you're doing amazing. Like it's it, you don't need that. Mm -hmm. You're not great. You can do better, right? You your life is worth more. There are college, rules that work. College is a, every stuff. single person that I went to school with is not using the degrees that they paid for. What did you What did you go to what college they actually, for? What did I, uh, journalism. Isn't that what you're doing right now? What do you mean? Like journalism oh, stuff? You probably don't know my backstory. So because my family was poor, I had to take out loans to go to school. My mom didn't even graduate high school. So Wait, what? if your family's poor, why would you have to take out loans to go to school? What? I just told you. If your family's poor, why would you have to take out loans to go to school? Why would I have to take out loans to go to What do you mean? I have to take out loans so my, my family can't afford to pay to put me through school. Hold on. Was your family actually poor or did you just lie? What are you, what are you talking about? If you go to school and your family has a low gross income, you fill out, you fill out the FAFSA. And the FAFSA is going to award you a ton of federal aid, assuming that you don't actually have the gross income from your parents to actually go to school. So if your parents are super poor, I don't know why you had to pay full out-of-state tuition to I, go to a university. I did. Do you think, what, what do you mean, did I lie? I'm, I don't know how, like, if your parents are poor, if they have a listen, low gross income, how do you not qualify for the FAFSA? Okay, well, all I can say to you is that I had to pay 35, almost, my school cost more, and by the end of it, and I'm also including because then I defaulted on my student loans and I had to pay it back, so now I had to pay back the bank for not being able to pay them on time. So, this doesn't something doesn't match up here. Okay, well, I'm telling you the truth, so I don't know what to say. I did you fill that, out, did you a, fill out a FAFSA? Yeah, well, I also didn't have parents that could help me fill it out. I was a first generation college student. My dad. Uh, you didn't have a school the same school counselor you, you told these people to ignore. You didn't talk to one of them and said, "Hey, I, I, can I you don't help me know, fill out?" Like if you're trying to shame me for not, I'm doing not trying to right, shame you. I'm just like, the like, background I, doesn't I make any it. sense. I'm, I'm, I'm just, not shaming I'm just, anything. I'm just like I don't get your point here. Like I'm telling you the truth. I have no reason to lie about this. My point is, you complained about having hundred thousand dollars in debt. You told these people not to talk to counselors, and you said that your family was poor, so you went to school for journalism on an out of state tuition. You didn't fill out a FAFSA for any student aid. I'm just saying, like, what what is your point in saying? Am I lying about it? Like because I don't understand how you came from a poor family and didn't fill out a FAFSA and get a ton of student. Made. I did fill out FAFSA. And they didn't give you anything? They, I, I maybe got, in terms of a, I remember getting a Pell Grant that was like $8,000. Okay, per But year? I'm telling the truth, so I just I just wanna be clear. I'm telling the truth about my life. Like, I don't know what to say to you. And, and I don't get why, what was your question of saying like, why did you take out a loan if you were poor? I don't understand that question. Like, I don't get it. 
because the implication is that if you've filled out if you filled out a FAFSA, your parents' gross income is used to heavily determine the amount of student aid that you'll qualify for. And if you're coming from an incredibly poor family, you usually get a ton well, of Well, that's student not aid. what happened. Maybe that circumstance and please guys jump in the chat. Like if you if somebody said Destiny, that's stupid. I don't I don't think they just give you free college if you're poor. I, that's not my experience. Did you go to university? Did you get free money? Um I did and I got some free money, but I had to get married for it because my parents had a high gross income but a lot of debt, so I didn't qualify okay, as well, well on the FAFSA. So I had to get married at nineteen. I, I yeah, I paid back my student loans all by myself. So I could tell you that I spent over six figures paying back my student loans to attend the University of Rhode Island. And okay. that is the truth. I, don't, I mean, and no, I am not lying. My family does not have any money. Okay. Um, my parents don't own anything. I don't, I mean, I, we don't even have a house. Like we don't even own, obviously, I don't mean like we're homeless. I meant like as in like my family does didn't even own property. So it's like, no, I'm not lying about that. So I don't, I don't know. What so right isn't, are we isn't chasing the there? Here, isn't the issue here then, why would you go... Also, I understand if you have to leave at any time, because he said you had a hard out at 3 or at 3 or 6, so... Yeah. Right. I don't understand why you would go to an out-of-state school for a journalism degree and then turn around and blame colleges for being bad when it feels like... I'm not blaming you, colleges for being bad. I am telling people the truth so that they can avoid making some of the mistakes Which is, that, don't go to an out-of-state school for a degree that sure, might not confer a high yes, amount of money? Yes, I probably should have... Yes, I'm, I'm sorry that I was, you know, 17 years old and I didn't have parents that were able to provide the economic, you know, the economic advising of course that would have been smarter and my sister you know two of my sisters went in state and but they still had really heavy loans so I don't know about this FAFSA magic thing that you think happens then my sister paid uh, about twenty thousand dollars a year um, when she went in state so I, I just I don't I don't know what I don't I just don't know what you're talking about at all with that because all of my sisters we all had to pay loans we my older sister just finished off paying her loan so I don't know I just don't know what you're talking about the FAFSA magic button. Maybe I, if I, if honestly, if I missed the FAFSA magic button and they were going to pay for everything, then maybe I am just really stupid and I had no idea. Yeah, they would I don't just know. Pay hey, for listen, I'll be honest. As as maybe it's like a not... difference in like areas or people that we talk to. Maybe because the high school I went to was like very oriented and trying to get you to college. But when I was going to college, like I think FAFSA stuff was like the most important thing, like student aid. But and I, the I did, for it was I like, did, I did fill it out. I don't know if it's because we had my family had multiple children and we were all going to. I, I don't know what the circumstance is, but I'm okay. just telling you that the truth is that I paid for my college and I do try to tell people that if you don't know what you want to do, spending tens of thousands of dollars trying to figure it out is probably not the right move. Like oh, you. Sure. You can always go to college. You can go later. You know, try to figure out what you're good you at. Think? Get an internship. I hire people mm -hmm. that are right out of high school because I don't just believe this. Like, sure. you know, there was a young woman that now works for me who was like, I don't really know what I'm doing here. I kind of just want to be a mom. I was like, do not spend. And her out of tuition rate was fifty thousand dollars for an in for an, a Tennessee school. Okay. And so I hired her. I mean, I'm not telling people. Like I said, I tell people how I actually live and what I actually believe. And you, I don't know. And to... I don't know that you do that. I, like, don't I do. don't I do. don't justify women acting like whores. Well, I don't justify trying to prescribe lifestyles to people. What? Don't justify trying to prescribe lifestyles to people. It's not prescribing a lifestyle. Of course it's just, it is. You're, when you're, somebody the, said that they would be happy not having kids, you were like, oh, she sounds like a conceited bitch or that's something. That's not what like, she said. That was a that's not yeah, what that she was the said. TikTok clip you were responding that was to. That's not what she said, and I can tell you exactly what she that said. That she was caught to go on I said there was absolutely and... no reason to make a comment that suggests that people, she was actually being insulting to people that had kids. She and she does. It wasn't just one video. She makes multiple videos about how great life is if you don't have kids. If I was making videos with my kids saying about how great life is if you just you know stop being a loser and get married, you people would come after you because people hate the traditional lifestyle on display. Wait, but that's literally she, what she, you guys say. No, get married, have kids. That's the only way to go. Otherwise, you're a loser. No, we do not. That is, you're just making up words oh, that okay. have so, never maybe come that's out not of the my case. mouth. So wait, so if somebody said if there was a young woman and she's like, I'm 20, I think I'm going to go to a career um, and, and be a whatever. I don't think I want to have a family. I don't think life's for me. You would. Say, okay, well, that's fine. You should make that no, choice. No, I would then. say that's completely normal at 20 years old. That's uh, most, oh, wait, wait. Most... So then they should change their opinion later on. What if she was 25 or 30? She's like, no, I don't think I want to have kids. Would you be, okay, if that's she, fine. If she was a 20 year old person and she was saying that I don't think that I want to have kids, then what I would say is that's pretty typical because you're 20 years old and you, you're, you haven't yet had the biology thing happen to you, which, like, when they say, that your biological clock starts ticking, it's very real. Because when you get into your mid-20s, you have a totally different feeling. So if a like, woman like is something... 25 or 30 and says, I don't think I'm gonna have kids, I think I like my career, I'm gonna stick with it, you'd say, okay, that's fine, it's your choice. Yeah, as long as that person isn't trying to, and by the way, I think that that person would probably be, it would be unusual. Like it wouldn't be, the majority of women I think do want to have families and want to aspire to family, and that's fine. But when you try to create a brand of it and you say things like, oh, well, you know, when, if, you, if you have kids, then you can't just smoke pot and stay in bed and be naked all day. This is actually something that like Seth Rogen just said. Okay. What you're doing Sounds there is awesome. you're actually trying to, you're 30, how old Five. are you? You're 35 years old. Yep. 
Okay, so what what are you? What is that? What do you? What do I do? Like if you were twenty well, let's and say you were I'm saying this stuff, I travel the world. I get to research and talk about whatever I, I get, want. I get to yeah. talk to cool people like you and other people. I get to, I live in Miami in a high rise for five thousand a month. I mean, I I think my life is pretty okay. I mean, okay. what do you? But no, but I'm saying like, what are you doing when you're trying to sell to people that? You know, being a hoe is cool. Smoking pot, saying about, I don't necessarily like, think that being a hoe is cool. Are you, like, are you going to age out of that? What like, I try, what I because so, you're, thir- you're thirty five year old man, right? I, like you know, and you're, and you're, yep. you're kind of doing the like I'm a college dorm kid, and I'm trying to make everything sound cool. But I just want to point out the fact that you're a thirty five year old man, mm-hmm. and your words should matter, and they should they should have weight. Like you, it, I, like I, I said, agree. if you were twenty, I'd yep. be like, I get it. When you're thirty five. Mm-hmm. You know, say things with conviction. Say I'd things say that have meaning. Plenty of things with conviction. Yes. You know, and like when I asked you, what would you recommend to a woman at twenty-five and thirty? I didn't just start rambling about what a twenty-year-old should do and how biological, blah 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 blah. I would say exactly what I would tell a woman at twenty-five. Or yeah, 30. I know, but your behavior and 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 I will appreciate that people that are younger d- won't understand what I'm saying until you hit thirty-five, which mm-hmm. is I'm I'm gonna be thirty-five this year. Okay. You're acting like you're a college dorm kid. Yeah, and your catty insults towards people online make you seem like a high school mean girl. Okay. I mean, like, what do you mean? Like, we all have our, our things. But you're like, selling to them things that you know aren't good. So what, what do you think I, what, I'm so selling if you, to them? If you what do you think were I'm a 25 year old, good. like when I'm on the whatever podcast and I'm yeah. surrounded by women that are in their 20s mm-hmm. and they're saying like, you know, the whole life is good. The reason why I said to that girl that I'm going to pray for you is because I know that she's going to have a different perspective when she's older. So I don't. I'm not upset by that. I don't feel like that needs to be attacked when that woman, when that young, when those young girls are around me and we're talking about all of these topics when i'm sitting with a 35 year old man okay and what do you, you think i'm and, selling and, people and you know better okay wait, wait, what do you think i'm selling people well what i said people to well, be like, a hoe? what i said when you were defending the lifestyle of being a hoe why are you doing that i don't think i defend the lifestyle of being you a hoe. did you did a whole video basically saying that none of my points of me trying to tell these women that they essentially you can do something better you don't have to sell your body this was your like snazzy video comeback to it. Why are you making a comeback? Yes, you can make a video and be like, why can't someone do heroin? But why would you as a 35 year old man want to sell something to someone or make it seem okay or cool or relevant when you know it's harmful to them? I don't get that because of your age. So, yeah, I, so I don't understand. I don't know how, what your takeaway from the video was or if there are researchers that give you like talking points to my videos. But generally what I talk about is when it comes to lifestyle, you have to analyze both sides of things. If you grow up incredibly religiously conservative and you are like shamed out of sex and you don't have sex with anybody your whole life because you're super, you know, hyper uh, cognizant of your virginity and all of these like weird things. And that's like coming from an unhealthy external place to say, oh, well, maybe that's worth exploring. On the flip side, if you grow up like hyper liberal and you've fucked like 20 guys by the time you're, you know, 20 years old and you just want to bang everybody and you've got like weird associations with men and everything, I'd say, hey, you should probably slow down. It's probably not healthy. Um, I just encourage people to like explore, honestly, to have like conversations with themselves, with their parents, uh, could be with priests, could be with therapists, could be whatever, and to kind of figure out like what works for them and don't get pushed into one direction from a culture side. It could be the left encouraging people to be way too promiscuous, or it could be the right for people that are shaming people for being promiscuous and saying that, well, this one lifestyle of family stuff is going to biologically be suited towards you as you get older. I think both of these are equally stupid because it just pushes people in the other direction. So you don't believe in anything is what you're saying. Is that what you got from that? Well, you're not committing to I anything. I believe in actually thinking for yourself. That's what I think. I think that every human being roughly exists in this like paradigm where if you fuck 100 people by the time you're 20, probably not healthy. If you've never had sex before and you're 30, probably not healthy. And that you should probably like try to gravitate towards what are like human norms and then what are things that make you happy depending on your culture, depending on your geography. And then you kind of like explore in there. Don't be shamed out of exploring from one side to the other. Don't be pushed into something because somebody like Candace Owens or somebody like Stephen Bonnell tells you that you have to do a particular thing, but just like kind of explore I don't tell people things. that they have to do a particular thing, but if I see See somebody that's, do. that's doing heroin. I'm not going to be like, you know, it is whatever, and it's just like whatever. You're just, do you think you're that heroin, heroin is comparable to recreational I, I, sex? I, I am. I am. Quite frankly, I actually think a woman, as the one that I sat across from when you were critiquing this video, who says that she slept with up to what was it, 20 men per night? Yeah, it's just as bad. And I know that that has to be hurting her soul. So I look at her as a human being. Hurting her and, soul? What yeah. if she just has a different lifestyle she than you? She doesn't. Completely. She no, does, she does, you she, know. No, she ha- what do you mean, you know? She's, she's telling you, she was very honest, actually. And that's why I appreciate her, because she was very honest that for her, it is just about money, okay? But when I see that individual, when a young woman is saying that she'll sleep and see up to 10 to 20 clients per night, that's a broken individual. And it's just as, it's and just when, you, just as when you see why? somebody who says that, you know, they're doing heroin or doing this, they don't need the guy, the cool guy at the party, be like, yeah, man, it's whatever. Like, you it's, it's like, no, you actually, like, structure, you need somebody to say to you, you don't have to do this. There, you, there is so much better potential within you. You are young. You have your entire life ahead of you. Let's figure out what it is that you're great at. I understand the economic concerns. It's a really tough economy, and it's easy money, but there's other things that you can do to make money that will give you better self-value. And so that's why I say that I think 
that what you're doing as a 35 year old man is you're you're lying. You're just lying. To Do you think people. I'm telling women on average that fucking 20 guys when you is make a good videos idea? and you're replying to conservatives who are rightfully saying that this lifestyle is not good, which should be abundantly clear to every single person. Yeah, what you're trying to do is lie in a clever way. You're and ultimately, like I said, if you were 20, I'd be fine with it. What? But when first you're, of all, I don't know why if I was 20, why that would because make you when fine you're, with what, it. because because you'd have it, the same influence in your audience regardless. Because your Number brain's one. not developed when you're 20. Number two, so what? Your brain's always developing as you grow. No, you, your brain develops when you're 25, 26 years old. And so when you see a 20 year old and they have mm-hmm. a bunch of positions, I don't hold them to it. I think you have time. I think that's with you're gonna, life experience. I think as you grow, no, but like literally factually, I don't know if you want to Google this, but your brain develops when you're 25, 26. If you really want to Google it factually, the 25 number came from one study that was done like 30 years ago, where they only measured brain development up to 25. And the reality is, the plasticity of your brain and every other structure of your brain continues to grow into your 30s. That's technically where that number comes from. It's not true. You can look it up later if you want. The 25, 26 thing is a misnumber. It's not actually true. Well, like I said, if you were if you were 20, I would accept. But there there is such a thing as objective truth and people that shirk and and pretend that there's not and like objective everybody can truth just do relating whatever to how they you want live your life? it's it's yeah the, no about about things that are harmful to people like objectively speaking so i'm curious like, wait what is the upper bounds on recreational sex that you think is harmful or not harmful w- w- when you're selling your body and sleeping with old i'm not asking that i'm just saying what is the upper bounds on recreational sex that you think is like like healthy for a human being well, like if well, you go past this you're like clearly over the line i'm not gonna say to a person this is a number that you should sleep with and this makes okay, well, you well don't accuse me of believing in nothing I'm not speaking I'm, out of position I'm where you only attack the most extreme people about the whatever yeah, podcast I'm going to attack the same people that you do if some woman is on saying like oh you can fuck 20 guys a night and do only because you're 18 I'm going to say in general that's a pretty wacky that's a pretty out there position I argue with tons of people over this I don't encourage people so, but, to start but what, is, what is the what are you trying to do what purpose are you trying to fulfill when you as a 35 year old man see me sitting down with these young women trying to say you don't need to do this you don't have to do this for money and you like attack it and try to be like Candace is just a bitch or like whatever like she's blah 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 blah. she's just being a high school mean girl it's like no I am trying to tell these women that they are worth more and when I said to that girl at the end of it which I don't believe you showed that I will pray for you and that you can do you can do much more than this that came from the heart actually. No, they, they, that is the most condescending thing a religious no. person can say to a non-religious person I will pray for you okay you can deal with your you know I, I know that you went to a Jesuit school and you've got some issues with somebody why do you think I have issues but I meant that because, I loved my because, high school because, I like I because, think it's be, fine. because for me to say like I meant what I said to her that I would pray for her like when she was describing why do you need she to was tell her that you'll pray for her because I, I did pray for her then do it privately why do you need to tell her that you're only telling her that because you think you've got such a condescension about you you've got such an air of superiority that you're going to pray for air her of to your superiority God. because yeah, i said i would god forbid someone says they'll pray that's obviously an air of superiority because they're saying they're going to include you in their prayers well i mean like literally you, you say, something god that my forbid, husband but like me, quite literally li- god forbid literally what, isn't there a whole story of a lady going to a temple and quietly putting like two per chance or whatever the, the fuck in the tray anti-christian the guy that, rhetoric I don't what is anti-christian oh my God, about if you, this if you say if you say i'll pray for you it's obviously you trying to be better it's like no what are you why are you even reacting to that i'll pray for you i'll pray for everybody that listens and watches this show when people say that they're going to pray for you they actually mean it you guys they just mean it there's no there's no double entendre thing going on there and anybody that can go back and watch that clip you will see that i was not speaking above her i actually genuinely responded to that girl because she was so honest and she was so forthcoming she was i I thought i actually wanted to do more stuff with her and we tried to reach out with her because she wasn't trying to lie or trying to pretend like her you know, her lifestyle was for health. She was clear that it was for money and she was like, I'm not gonna lie, this is why I do this. And I genuinely prayed for her. Actually, we, we were not enemies that were sitting across the table. So no, it was not condescending when I said I prayed for you, it was a fact. When I left, I said, I will keep you in my prayers because I have, in my heart, I wanna see that girl in 10 years and know that she left that field and she is able to speak to women that are still within it and think that they have to sell their bodies for money and sleep with 10 men per night. I am going to continue to pray for that young woman because we need people who transform their lives to then show people that they can transform their lives. And it's not condescending to pray for anybody ever. So okay, I will pray for you too then. Okay. You sh- yeah, you should. Okay. I hope you pray for me. I want you to include me in your prayers. I want every okay. person watching this to include. But I feel like our society has gotten so like anti It's like, oh my God, they're trying to get something. It's like, no, like I'll pray for you. I will literally pray for every single person person that I I think needs a prayer and I felt like she needed a prayer like she's like she's she could be there you know okay and you should watch it her and I had no like there was no beef between her and I well, we well you're telling me I did watch it and I responded to it so yeah, I remember watching and responding to you it was going over the TikTok clip I don't remember praying is cool though. you guys just so you know super dope to pray yeah. telling other people you pray I'll though, pray for you a little bit cringe. look at that but it's not it's not cringe there's nothing cringe about being a Christian it's actually never the said dope, there was anything cringe the, about being a Christian never thing, said that at all the dopest thing you can do oh, is pray pray in public 
you know talk talk about your faith and your christianity there's nothing cringe about being a christian there's nothing cringe about praying for others there's nothing cringe about getting on your knees and praying Correct. to god when things are wrong I agree with in your that. life yes. and so that culture yep. needs to come back yeah, and i think that's totally everything fine. that's going wrong in the society is by people being like told that praying no there's nothing constant about it. it's dope it's cool I don't know about that, this but. is the, this is the new uh this is the do you um this is the new wave well listen I disagree with everything you say. I think you're harmful to America. You think I'm harmful? That's fine. No, I, do I didn't you say you're harmful to America. Oh, I just said that it, it is harmful when you do things like that. Um, you know, when you know something's wrong and you still try to like find a way out. And gotcha. I just think that we can all acknowledge that selling your body is not a good thing, and gotcha. we shouldn't encourage people to do it. Okay. If people want to find you, or if you want to direct them to anything yeah. that you're working on, yeah, where were yeah. they? Listen, if you are a super not Candace Owens fan, if you're like the biggest non Candace Owens fan, I really challenge you to not believe the headlines that you've read and just watch one episode of my show. You don't have to commit to anything. Just watch one episode and actually listen to what I say out of my mouth and not how it's being interpreted by other people. Uh -huh. And I know I've gotten so many emails from people saying that like they changed their lives uh, because, the... and because just so you know, I am not better than you. Like I say on my show the whole time, I drank with the best of them. I took the most liberal route to conservatism that there ever was. So I am, I'm not better than anybody that I speak to. I'm, I'm speaking from the heart and trying to get people to avoid certain traps that, you know, I wish that I would have been able to avoid in my life. And we can have disagreements, but I, I think if you check out my channel on YouTube, check out the podcast, listen to one episode, you're probably gonna be able to very quickly determine and see where my heart's at. Okay, Candace Owens on YouTube, thanks. Mm -hmm. And again, we're combative, but I do appreciate the conversation. No, I, I do too. I, I would, by the way, I'd love to have you on my show. We could talk about other topics as well, but I, I actually wanna know what you think. Sure thing, yeah, if you ever want to, just Mitch send me an email, so yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so, all right. All right, thanks, thanks a lot, I appreciate bye. it. Bye.